Well, there you have it. Some secrets from the making of Secrets in the City. But now it's time for something a bit extra special. It's time to get to know the cast and gain an insight on what it's like to be an actor on Home and Away. The fun thing about working on Home and Away is, uh, you know, the great people that you get to work with. I guess everyone's saying that, but it's true. There's such a big cast and you get to meet different people and the directors are great and it's just everyone's really fun. There are so many people with different personalities and somehow if you actually get along with everyone and it becomes a pleasure to come into work. Your cast members become like your brothers and sisters. So it's like coming to you know, work every day with your best friends. I love the social aspect. I love the fact that I, somebody pays me to do what I did as a kid for fun. The things that make it fun is just, you know, having so many friends here, having such a good job to come to. Some days you do come in for one scene, the next day you come in for 14 in a row, and, and that, 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 that all adds to the madness, and that's what makes it so, so different from everything else. I do look for every available opportunity to have a bit of fun where it doesn't slow down the production or, or mess anybody up apart from Lynn Collingwood. Uh, <laughs> I like to work with props. She's got... Uh, bits of paper and plates and tea towels and uh, order books and God knows what, stashed all over the place. Ray often hides the thing that I have to pick up. And it's just wonderful to see the look on her face where she's dithering around, pulling faces left, right and centre and comes to the... Because you get to my age and you just expect Alzheimer's going to sort of strike you, you know. And I thought, oh, sure, I'd put it there. And then, you know, there's a filthy look at me uh, as soon as she can uh, give one, and then as soon as cut's called, the abuse starts, and it's wonderful. <laughs> I think Ben's great. <laughs> and I don't care what he says about me. Um, I love him to death. But she's <laughs> a little bit nuts. Um, and we have a lot of fun. She's really getting... We're really starting to get along with each other. I have a lot of rapport with Ray, I guess, because we both work in the same way. We both like to do the job quickly and to the best of our ability, but, um, but have some fun with it as well. I've shared a dressing room with him for, well, the best part of 15 years, I suppose, and most marriages don't last that long. Ray and I make the odd couple thing kind of work um, because I play the wife and he plays the guy. <laughs> I love working with Norman Coburn because he makes me laugh. <laughs> He makes everyone laugh, just his humour. I like to giggle a bit, you know. As soon as you call action, it's like Fisher. And it's like, oh my gosh. And he, he looks at you with those eyes and he, and he, you know, grumbles with his voice. And you're like, oh, I didn't do it. I found um, the first couple of scenes I ever did with Norman Coburn, uh, I basically giggled like a schoolgirl all the way through them because he's terribly funny. Yeah, well, he's a bit of a giggler, yeah. Yeah, she is. She's good. I like Paula. <laughs> I learnt then that I had to go in and... and um, Steal myself against the humour. Steal herself? It's come to that, has it? <laughs> I love working with Kate Ritchie because she is, as far as I'm concerned, the quintessential professional. I think the biggest kept secret on Home and Away is that Lynn McGranger is actually like Irene. <laughs> Just a different wardrobe. <laughs> Kate Ritchie said that about me. I'll kill her. Um, but, you know, spookily enough, she's probably right. I think when you're playing a character for so long, I think a bit of you comes out in every scene that you do. Maybe Leah's become a bit like me. Um, yeah, we started off a bit different. Um, she's probably a lot more forgiving than I am, uh, a lot more open-minded than I am. Um, I'm quite a strong person. She's not as strong as in, I mean, stubborn strong. Um, but yeah, I guess we've got a lot of similarities. We both like to talk. <laughs> Nick is your typical fun class clown type of a guy. He's really into relationships. He's, he's real mushy with his girlfriend. Alex is much more courageous than Danny. Like, do you, can you, would you believe that I have never, and this is a promise, I have never chatted up a girl? I've always been a big attention seeker, which was uh, very obvious when I was much younger. Not as much now, but, you know, when I was much younger. You know, baby, if I could rearrange the alphabet, I would put you and I together. You see, Alex would say that. I, I could never say something like that. I think Sally is the kind of girl that if she was your daughter, you wouldn't have very much to worry about. And I, when I was younger, I didn't enjoy playing her so much because she's always been the girl that wasn't so cool and didn't have all the cool clothes and didn't have um, cool storylines and didn't have the cute boys and things like that. Um, 
but maybe that has actually made her easier to relate to, to some of the audiences. I think I'm probably a more thoughtful person than Colleen is. I think Colleen, I mean, I insult people in real life, of course we all do. I have nothing to do with, with Don Fisher, nothing at all. When I first got this job, I thought, well, if it works, I'm just going to make it into a performance. I'm just going to make him totally unlike me in every way possible, so that when I um, have to do it, it's fun to do because it's somebody else. So I've always, um, you know, I've, I have nothing in common uh, with, uh, with Donald Fisher. We just look alike, that's all. When you're working with veterans, when you're working with people that have done so much and experienced so much with acting, it's hard not to learn. And I speak to Paula and I speak to Mick and I say, you know, I'm, I'm confused about how to play this, I need, I need some help. And, and they give it to you because, um, because obviously they know what they're doing. But um, it also, when you work with such amazing people, it brings out the best in you, your ability to perform, I think, and the chemistry that you guys have on screen. So it's, I'm very blessed to work with people that I get along with, number one, and who can act. Do you know what I mean? And you learn a lot from them in all aspects. I've learnt from them. I've learnt from the older experienced actors. I've learnt from everyone. I've learnt from the crew. I've got this little thing with my family where when I'm learning a script, I put it under my pillow. And then the next morning, some miracle I know. I still really feel like I'm learning myself. Um, there are obvious things that I may pass on when somebody new comes along and they're wandering all over the shop, I'm, I may say to them, it's probably best that you stay still so the camera can find you. But I did that for the first six months of my life on, in Summer Bay. When I first came to this show, uh, meeting a lot of the older cast members like Ray and Norman and Lynn, it was, uh, I mean, I was a bit nervous because, you know, I grew up watching them and uh, knew a bit more about their careers as well before Home and Away. And uh, just interesting to see how they've just when they come on set and the way they handle it and the way they do it and watching the way they you know, handle things and you know, do their line runs and prepare for their scenes. I'm more likely to watch Kate or, or Norman um, and maybe pick up something from them. Certainly if the kids come and ask, ask me stuff, I will do my damnedest to answer them truthfully. And if I don't know, um, I'll make it up. <laughs> I think being on Home and Away has taught me lots of things. Um, as well as being a great training ground for, you know, the acting field. It has had a huge influence on my life, I can't deny that. But when people talk about, oh, do you think you would be a different person if you weren't on the show and how has it affected you and all that kind of thing, I can't really comment because this is the way my life has always been and I don't have anything to compare it to. So I don't know if I would be better or worse or whatever if I hadn't been given the role all those years ago. But, um, you know, I wouldn't... I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't, wouldn't take back any of the years I've spent here. I think when Home and Away came along, they had this really good recipe. I don't, I, I'm not sure they even knew how good it was. It, like, like the kids come in with broken wings, the wings get fixed up, they fly off, just as another, another, another lot come in, you know, with broken wings and so on. Maybe what's made it a successful show is the storylines that maybe relate to real life. I've just finished doing a storyline which was all to do with uh, domestic abuse and um, basically the message at the end was speak out you know and, and it's all about doing it in a way where uh, you're enjoying what you're watching and it's not just a lesson. It sends out a, a, a good message to teenage kids you know they're our, they're our main audience is, is, is the kids and um, you know they can relate to the stories we tell and, uh, you know, parents want the kids to watch it because it does, in the end, it, it puts out a good message of, um, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Everyone in society, there's someone that they can link to and relate to and say, yes, that is what I feel, yes, that is what I am. In our show, you don't have to look like Rock Hudson uh, to live in a, in a reasonable sort of a house and have a pretty nice lifestyle. Ordinary people drive ordinary cars and have a really very pleasant lifestyle. Uh, and I think people relate to that. People just like the way it's got the beach and the sun and all the different characters like Ray and and it's just lots of hundreds of people watch it because it's a fun show. And it's nice to know that that many people across the world internationally can relate to a program that is also from Australia. It's a whole team that make Home and Away happen obviously, not just you know in front of the camera but behind and it's the whole thing of the support of the fans obviously because without Without the people that support Home and Away, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have a job, we wouldn't have a show. 
the fans are great. I mean, when they come up and say, you know, you've done a great job and can I have your autograph, I just, it makes your day, it really does. Um, when they come and just, you know, you've been doing really well and, oh, I had this problem and, and, you know, Jade did this and I did this too and it really helped me and I'm like, oh, you know, that makes me feel just, it just, it makes it worthwhile. To be able to make a difference in somebody's life, um, as well as to be able to enjoy what I do and to have some silly bugger pay me to do it is just wonderful. You can go for some time and not be recognised and then you'll have a day where everywhere you go people recognise you. Now that's quite good if you go to the bank and the post office. And it took me a while to get used to it. At first it was like, oh no, this is really weird. <laughs> and Why are these people looking at me like I'm in a zoo? I always think back to how I was when I was that age and growing up, like, I idolised Kylie Minogue and, 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 you know, if she would have walked down the street, like, I, I'd want to tell her that I loved her to death and I think, and I truthfully meant it. And, um, and so whenever anyone comes up to me in the street, I think it's really important to give them that time of day. I think a lot of them are a bit scared of me, um, which doesn't bother me very much. <laughs> These people treat me with the utmost respect. I cannot think why they do the general public. It really makes me laugh. I mean, I've, I've had many people come up to me and say things like, uh, um, <clears throat> what's it like to be a headmaster? Not what's it like to be like, but what's it like to be a headmaster? And <laughs> I usually say to them, well, I don't know, I just pretend I'm an actor. <laughs> I, uh, I've had some weird fan mail. I get gifts. <clears throat> I get um, ties and socks, all these sort of sober gifts that you might give a headmaster, you know, I mean, never anything I need. <laughs> One man told me uh, the exact and precise way and, and ingredients to tranquilize a horse and I thought that was very useful, so I wrote back and said thank you for the information, I appreciate it. Because I guess we all want recognition and we all want to know that what we're doing is good, but I think it's important too because sometimes when you're in that studio all day every day and you're surrounded by people that do the same thing as you do it becomes quite insular so you know you can forget that there are millions of people out there that watch it so it is really nice to walk down the street and have someone come up and say you know I've been watching the show and I think it's great and you know it makes it all makes it all worthwhile my advice to anybody that uh wants to do acting is don't do it no <laughs> joking know how to work in a team start having voice lessons find a good agency come to work prepared <laughs> the fact is you can do anything you want to do within reason i mean you're not going to fly be yourself and have fun and be prepared for hard work because it isn't you know 100 percent glam yeah, i think every bit of life helps if you want to be an actor I don't know how long I'll be on the show for or where I'll go afterwards or if I'll be here forever. I, I know that 15 years ago I certainly didn't think I'd be here doing this interview right now, but um, all I know is that I wouldn't take a minute of it back and for as long as I'm here I know that I'll be having an awesome time.